Hello everyone, welcome to Shardium's Sphinx beta net. It has finally arrived and the new addition of Shardium's sharded EVM layer 1 blockchain means that now you can also participate in Shardium's vision of decentralization for everyone by launching your own validator node. This tutorial is going to walk you through how to set up your own validator node, how to stake and unstake on your validator node. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. And so make sure you're on a Mac or Linux device first. So I'm currently on a Mac machine. If you're on a Windows machine, unfortunately, this tutorial does not apply to you. But we will have another update for Windows machines at a future date. If you're on Linux, you probably already know how to do all this. But the commands are going to be very similar to how you would do it on a Mac, but just with some certain changes, certain differences using sudo but I'm sure if you're a Linux user, you already know that. For a minimum hardware requirements, you're gonna need 60 gigabytes of SSD storage in a quad core CPU that's less than 10 years old and some other metrics. But what does all that mean? It essentially means that if you're not on a super old machine, if you're on a somewhat modern machine, say like the last four or five years that you've got your laptop, you're probably gonna be fine. But if you do want to check, you can go to your computer settings and check if your hardware requirements will be able to run this validator node. The architects of Shardium purposely worked on keeping the hardware requirements low to keep the barrier to entry low for everyone, so to increase our decentralization. Let's get into the prerequisites. We're going to need a few different softwares to be installed first. Let's first launch a terminal on a Mac. This You can do this by pressing the command and spacebar. It will show you a spotlight search, and you can just type in terminal, and it will launch a terminal for you. For this, I am actually on iTerm, which is just a different customizable terminal, but it's pretty much the same thing. If you're on Linux, go over to the Linux tab over here on the docs, and you'll be able to follow those. First, we need to download Homebrew. So you're going to want to copy this command that starts with dash bin, slash bin slash bash copy that in here paste it's going to ask you for your password press enter great so now that's installed you don't have to do this if you just installed it for the first time but if you think you've installed uh, brew before and you just want to check type in brew update and see what it puts out for you if it doesn't say already up to date then you might want to do a little update Okay, so now that brew is installed, let's go ahead and download our containers for with Docker and Docker Compose. So we're going to type in brew install Docker. Let that run. Again, here, if you downloaded Docker before, but you just want to check your version, do a Docker dash dash version. And once after Docker is installed, let's go ahead and download Docker Compose as well. Awesome. And if you just downloaded Docker Compose, you probably don't have to do the sudo command modifications, but just to be sure, let's go ahead and download, not download, let's go ahead and copy the sudo command over here. It's going to ask you for your password. So now this will give you permission to set up for your Docker Compose. And just for keepsake, let's go ahead and check our Docker Compose version as well. Oh, typo here. So that concludes step one. We just downloaded Brew, Homebrew, and Docker and Docker Compose. Okay, now let's move on to downloading and installing our validator script. So now over here at step two, we're going to copy this curl command that's going to access our validator script from our Shardium GitLab page. Throw that in there. It's going to ask you a few questions. Do you want to run the web-based dashboard? Yes, you do. Type Y. It's going to ask you to set a password next. You do have to set a password here. It can be anything you want, however long, however short. I would recommend keeping it short just so you don't forget it. 
set that password and for port number you can just hit enter and for the base directory as well you can just hit enter again and then that's actually going to take a few minutes now for the installation process to complete all right now we're back that concludes the installation script we can see here there's a few commands it's going to ask you if you want to use the dashboard go to this https link and if you want to use the command line interface which is essentially the same thing as the terminal we're going to enter this dot shardium directory first of all let's enter this dot shardium directory so type in cd dot shard you can then hit tab it'll auto complete for you let's enter here and then we're going to launch the shell dot sh script so now we're inside the node as you can see over here and then let us start the operator CLI GUI. Okay, so that starts our CLI GUI. And let's go over to now the web dashboard. So I'm gonna go over to this localhost page over here. When you first enter the web dashboard at this HTTPS localhost site, you're gonna get hit with this page that says your connection is not private. And this is just because the, your web host provider is not sure of what site you're trying to enter it doesn't mean anything serious it doesn't mean you're getting hacked or you have a virus or anything so you can just bypass this by clicking advanced and then proceed to localhost and actually in a future video we're going to be talking about web security and cyber security self-hosting and these different certificates that go into making a more secure network expect that at a future date for now let's proceed to localhost and with that you have entered the Shardium web dashboard. And here you're gonna see a bunch of different tabs. That's gonna say your node status. So right now it says stop because we haven't started one yet. Um, how much SHM you have staked? What are your earnings? And before we talk more about this, important to note, because we are still in the Sphinx beta net, it means that the SHM that you accrue and you get here are completely valueless at this time. They will have value in mainnet when that comes at a soon approaching near future date. Okay, so in a future date, we'll also go over all these tabs and talk about what these actually mean and how it's best for you to understand these things. And what we want to do for today is stay primarily on this maintenance tab that has the option for you to start and stop a node and also for you to add and remove your stake. Now, before we do that, you're first going to have to connect your wallet. But in order to do that, you first have to connect to the Shardium beta net network. And so I currently already am. But if you aren't, you can come over to the docs page. and go to the connect to shardium tab click to connect to sphinx you click this button and it will launch your metamask window and ask you if you want to connect to this network hit yes and then you'll be connected to the beta network and then you're going to need some test shm you're, you're just not going to look like this i got this separately for testing purposes but in order to get test shm let's go back to the main menu so we're going to go to the faucet here and that's going to launch this page in which you're going to go through a tweet process to request and receive your SHM. So when you go to tweet now, it's going to give you a tweet that essentially says this. What you're going to want to do here is copy your MetaMask wallet address and replace that with the OX000 thing address over here. Populate that, tweet it out, and then wait a few minutes and you will receive your SHM. Okay, so now now that we have connected to the network and received our test SHM, we want to connect our wallet to the web dashboard. Hit connect wallet. You're going to approve. Awesome. And then you, you might, depending on when you watch this video, you might get hit with this application error page or not um, this is a fix that is currently being in works it's also a similar issue where your HTTPS server is trying to access something from an HTTP site and so there's a disconnect there so the web host provider is not sure what's going on it's not anything to worry about because your wallet still is connected and you can verify this by just going to a different tab and coming back 
and you can see that your wallet is now connected. So now that we have verified your wallet is connected, we want to start our node. There's a couple ways you can start your node. You can do it here in the GUI by pressing start node, or you can do it in the CLI, up to you. If you want to do it in the CLI, let's go back over to the docs here. You're going to type in operator CLI start. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the GUI. I like the GUI. I'm going to hit start node. Wait a few seconds. OK, there we go. Now you can see that your node status is on standby. This means that your node has not been added to the network yet, but it is on standby and will be on rotation before it gets added. And in a future video, we'll actually talk about what all these different nodes mean. So anticipate that coming soon. But for now, let's go ahead and test this add and removing stake feature. So you want to add a stake here by clicking this button. And remember that there's a 10 SHM staking requirement. So you're going to want to stake at least 10. So when now when I click stake, you can see that um, my MetaMask wallet address has been populated here. The nominee public key is actually the public key for my node. Um, not really relevant for anything that you want to do, but it's just there. So you have that for the future. So okay, so let me stake 10. Okay, so then that will take me to my MetaMask page to approve this transaction. I'm going to hit confirm. You can also verify how it's going. When you go over here, it's pending right now. Oh, and there we go. It says stake successful over here, and that's probably going to change any second. Okay, so that's taking a little longer, but you can see here that you have successfully staked 10 SHM. Your stake address is over here, and you have met the requirements, so now you are staked. You are successfully part of the validator network. Now, if you want to remove, simple as is you just hit remove stake it's going to take you back to that metamask page you want to confirm your removal and boom there we go you have successfully unstaked your shm you don't want to do this if you want to keep accruing rewards you want to keep your shm staked but f for any reason if you want to remove your stake that's how you do it Okay, so now let's go ahead and stop my node too. So I'm going to hit stop node. Okay, there we go. We can see that my node has been stopped. And it does not give me the option if I want to stake because my node is not active anymore. But if I want to see this again, I will go ahead and start my node, and then go through that same process. Okay, so that about does it for this video. Um, in this video, we went over installing Docker, Homebrew, Docker Compose, and the Validator script, accessing the Web GUI dashboard, starting, stopping your node, and adding and removing your stake. Oh, I also forgot to mention, when you first get into the site, it's going to ask you for the password that you had set in the installation script. It did not ask for me a password here because I had already done it, so it knows that I'm, I'm part of the network already. But when it's your first time doing this, it's going to ask you for your password. So make sure to remember that password you had set before. And I do recommend just keep it a short, simple one that you can just remember easily. And you will get in fine. Okay, so that about does it. You have successfully contributed to the decentralization of the Shardium beta net network. And as always, the point of this beta net is right now to launch this, get the community to test these different features, discover bugs, see what's not working, see what's broken, and implement and push out these fixes. So as we approach mainnet, we can have a more secure and stable network that will allow better user experience, a lower barrier to entry, and decentralization for everyone. So again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave us a comment. Join our Discord, drop any comments. Our community members are very active and helpful in the comments as well. And if you have any ideas or suggestions for future tutorial videos you would like to see, please do leave those comments as well.